Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we are going to be playing around with mono repos. We're going to be using Rush to build our mono repo, but first of all, what is the mono repo? Basically think of it as one Git repository that has multiple applications or packages inside of it. So in our case, what we're going to be doing is working with two packages, one which is a React app. We're just going to use Create React app to keep it nice and simple. And then we're going to have another package inside of the same Git repository, inside of our mono repo, that's going to provide a component that we can use over in our React app. So why would we want to do this? Well, imagine we're at a company and we're maintaining three different React apps, but we don't want to rebuild what a button looks like every time, or maybe some logic for authentication. So there's a couple ways you could approach this. You could publish it to GitHub and bring that down from GitHub every time in your package.json file. But that's really slow development cycle because you'd have to push to Git, pull down, receive the results, and it's a bit of a pain. So what this will do is basically keep everything side by side so you can easily manage and update everything together and you can deploy it together at the same time. So we're gonna build this React app and then we're going to end up deploying it to Netlify. That's the goal of this video, so let's get started. So over here in our console, we're gonna spend a fair bit of time here today. Thank you to Quest Forms for partnering with me on this video. Quest Forms is a developer-focused form service ideal for web agencies, and they've just released version two of their product, and I wanted to mention one of my favorite features. Quest Forms comes with 49 tamper-proof validations that you can easily add to your form. And if that's not enough, you can even create your own custom validations. For a limited time, QuestForms is giving 50% off any annual plan for one year if you use the coupon code LEE50. So head on over to Quest.io and check them out. Thanks, let's get back to it. We've got an empty folder. So if I look at the folder, it's got nothing inside of it. So the first thing we're going to do is just install Rush because we need that to basically do anything. So we're just going to say install this globally and it's Microsoft slash Rush. So this will give us a, a rush um, command that we can run to basically kick off and initiate this project. But before we do that, we're going to install one more thing. We're going to install a package manager called PNPM. This is sort of the preferred package manager that rush recommends. So you've got yarn, you've got NPM. This is another one, PNPM. I'm not quite sure what the difference is, except, hey, it's got support for monorepos and it's fast. So who can deny that? So we're gonna install that as well, npm install globally pnpm, and that will just take a minute to get going. So the next step, step that we're going to do is basically initialize our mono repo. So we'll just say uh, rush npx, well, so npx will basically look globally if you have it, but we can just say uh, rush init, I believe and it's going to create a whole bunch of files. So let's open code for the first time and just take a look at what the heck's going on here. So the main thing is this rush JSON file. And if you're anything like me, when I first opened this file, it was like highlighted red like crazy. And that's because there's JSON formatting, which says you can't have comments in your JSON, everything is bad here. So you can actually pop this over to JSON with comments so that you can actually read it like a normal human. So down here, there's a few things that it highlights. Um, for example, what PNPM version. Um, so what do we got going on? PNPM version 5.7.0. So we're gonna update this just so that it's right. So you can use NPM and Yarn with this, but when I was on the sort of support, um, trying to figure out how to get this thing deployed to Netlify, uh, they were recommending PNPM. So that's just the one I'm going to go with. So there's a lot of options with a lot of comments, but I ignored most of this. And the section we are actually gonna play with a little bit is this projects. So this is where we're gonna add our two different projects that live within our mono repo. So the, there's a few other things in the common um, config there's some files you might want to delete if you're not using PNPM, like this PNPM file. But because we are and we're going with the standard setup, we can basically leave it uh, as is. 
So what we're going to do is create a folder and we'll call this apps. And we'll just go back down to the command line. So we'll go into apps. And then what we're going to do is create a new Crit React app inside of this. So for that, I'm actually gonna switch over to Yarn. We're using all of them today, just cause I know the Yarn create React app command. And we're gonna call this landing. We're building some sort of landing page, okay? So we'll just get this, we'll let it finish its installation. That won't take too long. And then we're, well, while this is doing this, why don't we hop back and go and add this to our project. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna say package name, it's called landing. And then we have to tell it where it is by setting the project folder. So it's in apps slash landing. Okay, so this will just take a second to finish up. And when it's done, we're going to run another command. And that command is rush update. So I'm not in the root of my monorepo, but it doesn't seem to really matter. Rush sort of knows you're inside of, of a monorepo and a, a rush monorepo, so it can do its thing. And it's now also going to install all of the different packages that it needs. And once that's finished up, what we can do is actually start our app. So if I look in this folder, I've got one called landing. So I'm gonna hop over into landing. And typically you would start this with like, npm run start or yarn run start, we're actually going to say rush x. Rush x is another command that gets installed globally when I installed rush. And basically what it allows you to do is run a command within one of your projects. So anytime you're tempted to run yarn run, npm run, use rush x instead. So we'll just say rush x start, make sure that this app actually boots up, and what we should see is the typical Create React app. So it's booting, it's handling its business, it's doing lots of stuff, okay, it's done. So our one app is working, but now it's time to go try and add a second app to our monorepo. Well, not an app, a package that will provide a component into this one. So we'll just stop this for now. We'll go back a couple levels into my video monorepo that now has apps for the landing page, the common stuff, and our rush.json. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna create a, a folder called libs, and we'll go into libs. So you don't have to put all of your packages in the same folder. You can sort of divide them up into a, a logical way that makes sense. For example, you have all your apps in one place, you have all, all of your libraries in another place, maybe you have your build scripts somewhere else. So we're gonna have libs over here. And what we're going to do is use a tool called TSDX. Um, I'll just pull this up so everyone can see what it is. TSDX. So it's a zero config CLI for TypeScript, but basically it kickstarts your, your application if you're trying to build like a TypeScript app. And it has a React option, so it's the easiest way to get going um, in my one pa package that I've published, I used TSDX and it was really easy to do. So inside of libs, we're gonna run npx TSDX so that it will just go and find it and run it for us. And the command we're going to run is create components. So what this is going to ask us is, do we want just a basic TypeScript one or do we want React or do we want React with Storybook? We're just gonna go with the basic one, and then it's going to go and install all of the packages that we need. So with that done, we have our second package installed. Um, we could go into it and take a look at what it, what it looks like. So CD components, code. You know what? I'm gonna close this code, because I already have this one open with everything. So it had, our, it had our landing app in here, create React app. We now have our libs with our components library. And so what does our components library consist of? It consists of a source, which right now, sure, allow, why not? Uh, right now, what it's doing is basically exporting one single component that says, delete me. You know what, we're not gonna delete this. We're actually just gonna break the rules and use it. So it's this component that returns a div that says the snozberries taste like snozberries. That's exactly the component library I wanted. So that's what I'm going to end up using. 
So this comes with, remember, we're not going to do yarn start. We're going to do rush X start. And what this will do after it finishes compiling the, the modules, um, it's just watching for changes. So basically it's compiling TypeScript as we go. But one thing you'll notice that this, um, this gives us is a warning. Your root directory is currently set to, to dot slash, set your root dir to dot slash src. So I ignored this the first time I was playing around with it. And because it's actually a warning, it messed up my Netlify builds. And I spent two hours trying to figure out what I was doing wrong with Rush when really it was this dumb warning that was breaking my build. So I'm just going to go in my TS config for my component library, and I'm going to switch up my router to dot slash SRC. Just like that. So we can stop this app because it's not really going to do anything. Let's go back to the main folder so we know where we are. And what we're going to do is run a command called rush update. Actually, not yet. What is the next thing we need to do? Oh, yeah. Sorry about this. I find with mono repos, it's a lot of like following steps. Like it's not really, I guess it is coding, but it's sort of just configuring stuff. So if you do it in the wrong order, it messes you all up. So what I am going to do is come, I forgot to add this thing to my projects. So I'm going to add my second package. It's called components. Actually, you know what? Let's call it at shared slash components. Just to show you that you don't need to give it the same name as the folder it's in, because right below we're going to give it the project folder, and this will be uh, libs components. So once we've done that, we're going to go and run a command line called rush update purge. Basically like break everything and we get an error. All right, that's great. So the package name, shared components, specified in Rust. Okay, I know what is wrong. So because we gave this a different name, what it is saying is that inside the package JSON for lib components, it has a name somewhere. Where am I blind? Name, there we go. So we actually just need to name this shared slash components so that it's happy. Try to run this again. It's going to basically wipe everything out and reinstall all of the dependencies. But what it does is actually it links them together so that in one week in the React app, we can reference our shared library that we're going to do right now as soon as this finishes. So with everything updated and purged, we're going to hop in to our, um, our apps landing. And what we're going to do is add a package. We're going to add the shared components package to this create react app. So we're going to say rush add dash dash package. So this would be instead of the yarn add or npm install or all of that, we're using rush commands inside of a rush mono repo. And we want to install shared components. So what it does because it knows, oh, you're referencing a local one that's inside of this mono repo. It uses that rather than trying to go out onto the internet to NPM and find it. So it tells us we should probably run rush build or rush be rebuild after. Let's, let's follow what it's saying. It's going to rebuild everything. Hopefully this won't take too long. And then what we're going to do is try to start our create react app and import and use that thing component that our shared components exports. So while this is finishing installation, oh, it's done. But why don't we hop over and go into our Create React app. So we've got our app.js. So we're just gonna get rid of the SVG. We don't need any of this stuff. And what we're going to do is import thing from shared components. It even had the, the type complete, which is awesome. And then what we can do is just use thing inside of here. So what we'll do now is into the command line, we're in the create react app and we just want to start this up again. So rush X start. So it's linking everything together and it's booting up our application and hopefully fingers crossed, it renders our create react app 
using perfect using the um, component that was imported from our other package. So what we've ended up with is mono repo, two packages, one's a Create React app, one's libraries, and they're linked together. So the next thing we want to do, we basically, we've built the most beautiful app in the world. We want to deploy it and share it to our friends and family, our grandparents, etc. But the first thing we want to do is basically prep, rush, to tell it, hey, we're going to be deploying our landing app. So what we can say is we're going to init deploy and we're gonna tell it which app we're going to do. And did this finish? Rush init deploy dash P project. Okay, maybe I forgot. There we go. Okay, so what it did is basically, it says it's creating a scenario file. No clue what that is, but it's inside of config rush deploy.json. So common config rush deploy JSON. And somewhere in here, it basically set up that landing is an app that can be deployed. So let's commit this. We've done a lot of work. We've, we've built great stuff. So let's get in it, add everything, commit everything. Um, you've added another repository inside your current repository. That's no good. So we're going to go into apps, go into landing. I guess landing create react app gives you a Git repo already. We don't want that. We just want the parent one. So let's remove Git from our landing app, go back again and just see where we're, where we're at. So here's all the files we're adding, our config for Rush, our component library, and in here, our app landing, create React app. So let's add this, commit, building beautiful mono repo. And we wanna push it to GitHub. So I'm just gonna pop open my GitHub, create a new repository. And we'll call this the video rush mono repo. Create that. It's going to give us the commands to copy and paste. So we can push this stuff up to GitHub. So we've got it into GitHub and now we're going to try to deploy this to Netlify. So hop over here to Netlify. I've already logged in and I've already linked I think I logged in with GitHub, so it's already linked up. We're gonna say we want a new site from GitHub. It's gonna pop this open and we can search our um, all my repositories. So mono repo, we should have, I think, one or two of them. So it's not the rush mono repo test, it's the video rush mono repo. Cool, and we're setting this up. We tell it which branch to choose from but there's a couple commands in the build process that we need to change. And that's because it's not your typical application. Our apps don't live in the root of the folder. They live sort of nested deep within um, apps, landing, etc. But there's a few things. So I've copied these down because it took me hours to figure out the right order to do these in, but I'm gonna type them and explain them as I go. So the first thing we wanna do is install Rush. Microsoft Rush. And when that's done, we're gonna run another command. We're going to say rush install, which will basically look at our mono repo and install all of the dependencies. Then what we're gonna do is run rush build, which as far as I understand, sort of um, links them all together and sets things up and runs the build commands of, of our different projects. And then we wanna run rush deploy and we can do this because we set up our landing app as a deployable app. We're going to say overwrite anything that might be there from like cached versions before. And we're gonna say it's the landing app. And then when this is done, we're going to CD ourselves into a folder. So it's common deploy apps landing. And this is a folder that gets created um, once we run this deploy command before. And the last thing we can do is run rushx build. So 
what we're doing is we're basically inside this landing app. Um, Rush has linked all of our uh, local packages together correctly and running a Rush build, what does this do? At this point, think back to a React app. Um, when they deploy, they typically have in their package.json a few scripts, one of them being build. So Rush X build is basically running this command here. And that's doing all of the Webpack stuff that Create React app does, and it's getting ready to deploy um, to deploy to Netlify. I'm just going to replace this with my command, just in case I type something wrong. I don't want to have it screw up. But one last thing we need to do is we basically need to tell it um, where our published directory is. Now I forget. So what I'm going to do is look at the other one that I set up that should be the exact same. You can see all of my suffering. This was my Saturday right here, just failed build after failed build. We finally got it going, and that's what I'm sharing here in this 20 minute video. So, for the publish directory, we want to point it to common deploy apps, our landing app, and then the build folder. So, when you run the build command, it puts everything into this build folder here. So, going back to this one, we're going to paste this in and then we're going to say deploy site. So it's saying deploy is in progress. So we can, oh no, already. Okay, preparing repo, sub modules fatal. Oh, you know what? Feel like something got royally messed up with that, that sub modules issue I had with the landing app. So I'm not going to redo this video. I'm just going to redo this part. So what I'm going to do is just delete git completely. I'm going to init fresh. I'm going to add everything again. I'm going to commit it. So that's everything. Perfect. We're going to just quickly create a new repo. I'll clean up the old stuff later. We'll call this video rush mono repo two because you know what, what's happening. Paste this in, get it deployed again. So with this here, we can come back, we can um, set up a new app, pop this open and choose from our uh, mono repo options, mono repo. So this one time we want two which in a second should come up. And I'm just going to copy and paste in this. And this was common um, deploy apps landing build. Deploy this site. So I'm hoping this time if we click into deploys. It's going to finish. So we'll, let, we'll just let it do its thing. The site is now live. It took just a, just about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes to finish building. So we can click this preview and open up our absolutely fantastic Create React app that uses the thing component exported from our shared components library. This is great because you can basically have a UI component library and your build scripts maybe and your auth um, utility functions and whatnot and share them across three, four, or five different applications. Um, this is just one use case for mono repos. Sometimes people use it when you're sort of managing multiple packages on and multiple NPM packages and you want to have some shared different libraries between them and manage them all in a single repository. It's really up to you, but it provides a great option when you run into this sort of scenario. I hope you enjoyed this. I will share the code below and I'll link to all of the different websites I've um, been clicking around on. I spent a lot of time in the docs on Rush trying to basically understand how this works and what the different commands are. So there's a whole bunch of, of the commands. We used a number of them today. For example, uh, Rush Deploy. And it goes into detail about sort of what it does and what are all the options you can pass to it. So spend some time in here. And I uh, hope you build many mono repos. Take care. Bye.